Hello and welcome back learners. In this series, as we have been talking about various aspects of Russian language like its origin, the Russian alphabet and several other things like the nature and structure of the Russian alphabet. We have also talked about the phonetics of Russian language and to learn about the basics of Russian phonetics, we have talked about the letters of the Russian alphabet, then to further classify into consonants and vowels. With the help of combination of these vowels and consonants, now we are able to understand the nature and pronunciation of these vowels and consonants when used independently as well as when combined together. In the previous lessons, we have talked about the personal pronouns and possessive pronouns. We have talked about that how to construct simple sentences, interrogative sentences, affirmative sentences and sentences in negation. We have also talked about the agreement between the adjective and noun endings. Now we have learned about the basic of how the verbs in Russian language are conjugated. In the previous lessons also we have talked about that while using new words and expressions and verbs in their conjugated form, how we make new sentences and after making several sentences when combined together in a form of text, how we express meanings. In the earlier lessons, we have also promised you that you will be introduced to the verbs of motion. These verbs of motion as called Glagoli Dvajenia in Russian will be discussed. In this lesson, as we are going to introduce you to the case system in Russian language, we will be discussing about several cases in Russian as we have told you earlier that these cases play a very significant role in the Russian speech. From simple sentences to the complex sentences, how these cases along with the help of verbs are being used will be discussed in a very detailed manner in this lesson. If you remember that in the beginning of the previous lessons, we have talked about that the usage of sto and kto for inanimate and animate. Accordingly, if you pay attention to the usage of such expressions in this lesson, you will be able to understand them in a better way. Dear learners, now in this lesson, we will be learning more about the usage of cases as the first case in Russian is called nominative case or iminichil nipadyesh in Russian. Along with the prepositions used like va and na which means in and at, we will be discussing more about the place of action nouns and adjectives and the agreement between their endings in a more detailed manner, especially in the prepositional case. Further, we will be discussing more about the verbs of motion in Russian as we have been discussing about them in the previous lesson. We have done two verbs of motion, but in a very small and fractional way. The verbs were ichi and khajich, which actually means to go on foot, but the usage of these verbs actually signify their completion or non-completion. Furthermore, we will also be learning along with new Russian words and expressions with all the things which we have just discussed. So shall we go ahead? Dear learners, before we start, in Russian language, whenever expressions like where and where to are used, they are often used through a case system. That is why while construction of sentences expressing place of action, we are using a special case here called prepositional case or pradlozhny padyesh called in Russian. As defined by its name only that it is a case where prepositions are used. And in Russian, as we have prepositions like in, at and on to define a place of an action. 
dear learners by using the exact usage of in at and on as we call them v and na in russian you will be able to express your exact place or place of action but before we exactly start about learning more about prepositional case in detail let me tell you a little about the case system in russian language along with their definitions as we have been discussing about the case system in russian language as you already know that there are six cases these cases are an integral part of russian grammar with the help of these cases one can understand the meaning of expression of a sentence in a correct manner these six cases are nominative case prepositional case accusative case dative case genitive case and instrumental case let's understand the exact meaning of these cases and how they are called in russian let us take the first one nominative case it is called imini chilni padyesh in russian it talks about the subject of the sentence like eta moy brat this is my brother here brother or brat is the subject likewise the second case prepositional case or predlozhny padyesh as it is called in russian is used to define after certain prepositions like v or na which means in at or on the third case is accusative case or called vini chilni padyesh in russian it talks about the object of the sentence the next one is dative case it talks about the indirect object of the sentence as you already know that dative case is called da chilni padyesh in russian the next one is genitive case or raji chilni padyesh as it is called in russian it indicates ownership the last one is instrumental case as it is called tvari chilni padyesh in russian dear learners tvari chilni padyesh or the instrumental case talks about the indication or usage with or by means of that is why the name instrument has been given to it so let's revise them once again in russian imini chilni padyesh predlozhny padyesh vinni chilni padyesh da chilni padyesh raji chilni padyesh and tvari chilni padyesh dear learners it is advised that you learn the sequence of these cases of russian in this manner so it would be much easier for you to remember them as well as use them when you'll start using these cases after learning about them in your day to day communication let's understand these cases with a few examples now let me give you a few examples about the nominative case now the nominative case answers the questions who or what it is an initial form all dictionaries give nouns in the nominative form only Let's take a few examples. Student chitaith means the student is reading. It is in its initial form. It talks about who or what. Student remains student here. There is no change as you can see on the screen. Let's go to the next case now. The next case is prepositional case. here the prepositional case is used to designate a place or a person which is an object that is an object of speech and thought the case is always used with a preposition that is why it is called prepositional case let's discuss this case with the help of a few examples please pay attention to the construction of the sentence and usage of preposition 
Она мечтает о лете. She dreams about the summer. Она мечтает о чем? Святые стоят на столе. Святые стоят на чем? So accordingly, these questions are asked in preposition case. For example, let's understand the meaning of the second sentence. Switi stayat na stalye. The flowers are on the table. Here, the preposition o and na are used as about and on. Lieta changes into liete. And stol changes into stalye. Here, lieta, the o changes into ye. Whereas, L, the last syllable in the stole, has been changed into ye. So, accordingly, ye is added whenever we are using nouns in preposition case. Let's go to the next case now and understand it with a few examples. The accusative case. It designates the object of an action. What do we mean by that? Let understand about this with a few examples. Let me read these sentences for you while you understand the construction and pronunciation. Ya chetayu gazieto. I read the newspaper. Ya vstrechil druga. I met the friend. Here, as it talks about the designation of the object of an action. In the first sentence, gazeta or the newspaper is used as object of an action. That is why, according to the rule applied in this case, if the noun is of feminine gender, it changes into u, like gazeta changes into u. If any noun of animate nature has been used as the object of an action, it will be changed into a, like druk changes into druga. Let me repeat it for you. Ya chitayu gazetu, ya vstrechil druga. Here, gazeta changes into gazetu and druk changes into druga. Let's go to the next case now. The dative case. The dative case designates that something is given or addressed to the person, which is acts as an object in the sentence here. Let us understand it with the help of a few examples. Please pay attention to the intonation and pronunciation. Ya idu kvrachu. I go to the doctor. So here, vrach, which means doctor, is something which has been addressed. That is why ya idu ka vrachu. Accordingly, the next sentence is ya dayu etu drugu. I give it to the friend. Accordingly, whenever there is a noun of a masculine gender, it changes into u, like vrach changes into Vrachu and Drug changes into Drugu. Let's go to the next case now, the genitive case. The genitive case as it is used to show that something or somebody belongs or refers to something or somebody, it can be translated by of in English. Let us understand this with the help of few examples. Bereg Riki, the bank of the river. Rika changes into Riki because in Russian, instead of using of, the last letter of the noun changes into E if it is a feminine gender word. That is why Rika changes into Riki. Let us go to the next or the last case in Russian language. The last case in Russian language is called the instrumental case. 
The instrumental case is used to denote an instrument that helps to make something. What do we understand by this? Let us understand in a more detailed manner with the help of these examples. Ya pishu karanda shom. I write with a pencil. That is why when we used this construction, the karandash or the pencil changes into karanda shom. This basic formula is used in instrumental case when we express that an instrument which is being used to help to make something where the sense of with is coming. Dear learners, with the help of these definitions and a few examples of basic level, we have just started talking about the usage of these cases in Russian. Of course, since Russian is a very rich language, in each case in itself is very rich. There would be a plenty of examples as well as exceptions in each and every case. Since we will be discussing about them in their own dedicated lessons, just for the beginning we will learn all the names of these cases and the basic nature and definition of these cases. Let us revise them once again. Nominative case or the Iminichilni case. It talks about, it answers the questions who or what. It is the initial form. Then we have prepositional case or Pridloshni Padesh as it is used to designate a place or a person that is an object of speech and thought, this case is always used with prepositions. The third one is accusative case or the vini chilni padiej. It is used to designate the object of an action. The fourth one is dative case or the da chilni padiej. It designates that something is given or addressed to the person. The next one is genitive case or Raji Chilni Padiesh. It is used to show that something belongs or refers to something. It can be translated by the use of of in English as we use. And the last one is the instrumental case or the Twari Chilni Padiesh as is called in Russian. It is used to denote an instrument that helps to make something. And with the help of examples, we have understood a little about these cases. Let's now understand about these cases and their usage one by one. Since for the beginning, we'll discuss a few cases with the help of text. While I read this text for you, you must pay attention to the words and expressions and the usage of verbs in their conjugated forms and try to remember them. We will be understanding the meaning of this text after I read it. Volgagrad, Ochin Balshoi e Krasivi Gorad. Etat Gorad na Kojitsa na Yuge Rasi, Moi Drugivan, Jivot Volgagradje. Here we are actually talking about Volgagrad, which is again one of the finest and largest city of Russia. Volgagrad, Ochin Balshoi e Krasivi Gorad. Volgagrad is a Ochin means very. Balshoi, big and beautiful city. Etat Gorod na Khojitsa na Yuge, Rasi. This city situated at on the south of Russia. Here we have used the preposition na with Yug. And since we have used a preposition, Yug changes into Yuge, Rasi. Moi drug Ivan Zhivyot Volgagradje. My friend Ivan lives in Volgograd. Again here we have used another preposition V, which means in or at. In Volgograd. On Stujian. Ransha Yivoraji Chili Zhilif Moskve. Here again we have used preposition V Moskve in Moscow. Ransha earlier his parents also lived in Moscow. Asichas and Jivut Vetam Goraje, and right now they are living in this city. Yivomama Inna Petrovna Prepadavachilnitsa. 
His mother, Inna Petrovna, is a professor. As we have discussed about the endings of Chil and Nitsa, you must be remembering that for Pripadavachil, it's a male professor and for Pripadavachil Nitsa, it's a female professor according to the ending of these nouns and words. Anarabhota at institute, she works in an institute. Iyo institute nakhojitsa v centre gorada. Her institute is situated at the center of the city. Yevo papa Anton Nikolaevich Vrach. His father Anton Nikolaevich is a doctor. On rabot at Balnitse. He works in the hospital. Eta Balnitsa nakhojitsa nidaliko. This hospital is situated not far. Yevo starsha sister Maria uchitsa universiteche. His elder sister Maria studies in the university. Ana živjot vapši žiči. She lives in a hostel. Here, those expressions which are being underlined are used with ex prepositions. These prepositions has been used as na, va, etc. And according to the context, they are being translated according to the context and you have a very fair idea that how they are being translated now. Let's go to the next paragraph now. Sivodnya vaskrisenya syasimya adhikhayat Today is Sunday. The entire family is taking rest. Mama, Papa, Imalatsaya, Sistra, Idut, Park. Mother, father and the younger sister is going to park. Here, Idut has been used as verb of motion in a ani form because mama, papa, imalat, sestra are taken together as ani. Ani, idut, park. There is another interesting fact that in verbs of motion, whenever we are using them in their conjugated forms, while using the preposition, the rule of preposition case does not apply. Uh, Ivan is Jot Nastajion and Ivan is going to the stadium. Sivodnya Nastajione Igrait football near Kamandi Jinamo Ispartak. Today at the stadium, football teams Dynamo and Spartak are playing. So, according to this text, if you pay attention to the new expressions, words, and verbs in their conjugated forms are being used, you can also use them in your own text. Before we conclude this session, let me tell you a few more verbs in their conjugated form. As very oftenly, nakhojitsa, which means to be situated at, have been used throughout the several text. But how do we conjugate it? Please pay attention to the conjugated forms of this verb and pronunciation. Nakhojitsa means to be situated. Ya nakhajus, ti nakhojisya, ona na nakhojitsa, mui nakhojimsya, vi nakhajichis, and ani nakhojitsa. Since these are the verbs which are totally different than verbs which we learned in the previous sessions, the ending of such verbs which are ending with tsa and soft sign are to be learned in a very more efficient and correct manner. You must practice all these verbs by your own at home so that by learning and revising them, you will be able to understand the right and correct conjugated forms of verbs in your own sentences and verb. Please note that the verb nakhojitsa is more often used in third person singular like nakhojitsa and plural number nakhojitsa for example, Muzie Nakhojitsa of Centre. The museum is situated in the center. Echi Fabriki Nakhojitsa na Vastoke Delhi. These factories are situated at the east of Delhi. So, such are the expressions and sentences you can also make by yourself. And before we conclude this session, please go to the text once again and see what are the common Russian words and expressions as well as verbs 
which are being used in this text. Such of the words and expression and conjugated forms of verb are being used in the earlier lessons as well. By doing this, you will be able to understand Russian in more correct and efficient manner as well as you will build up your own vocabulary and you can make your own simple sentences and sentences as interrogative, affirmative and sentences with negation. Now after doing a lot of such exercises in the form of dialogues and text, you will be having a good number of Russian words and expressions in your existing knowledge of Russian. With this, we will conclude this session here and we will revise a few more expressions which we learned in the last few lessons. Please revise them, listen it to carefully as I revise it right now. Dobri dien, dobrai vechar, dobrai utra, zavtrak, abed, ужин. Спокойной ночи. Здравствуйте. Как вас зовут? Привет. Который час? And let's make a few more expressions while using the days of the week. Какой сегодня день? Сегодня понедельник. Means what day is it today? It's Monday. Likewise, you can also make a few more sentences. Какой сегодня день? Сегодня вторник. Сегодня среда. Сегодня четверг. Сегодня пятница. Сегодня суббота. And сегодня воскресенье. With this, I conclude this session. Thank you.